What's up, socialites? I'm Alexis Joy, and today I am joined by Elena and Halima. How are you all doing today? Great. Great. Thank That's you. good. Thank you. So tell us about the inspiration behind Hawking Out Entertainment. So the inspiration behind Hawking Out Entertainment is um, helping um, people discover um, their path, like what they want to do as far as getting the insight and getting the guidance. Because a lot of people want to start out just to say independent artists, and they don't know what to do or you know, where to turn to, because a lot of people like to keep secrets to themselves. Mm -hmm. I'm the one that I want to give them the tools that they need to succeed and you know, to just create a bigger platform for themselves. So that's where I step in. I've, I've always had a difficult time in the beginning of starting my business where I needed help and I didn't know where to turn or what to do. Mm -hmm. So I want to be that for people that need that. So um, that and was the whole purpose of Hawking Out Entertainment. You are needed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. You are needed. And yes. what are the various services that people can expect to get? Um, well, I do, well, we have a couple of things that we do. We do branding, we do marketing, um, we help them plan, mm -hmm. uh, figure out exactly what it is that they want to do and what direction they want to go into, mm -hmm. um, uh, styles, if whatever if they need, um, help with like getting ideas on how to dress or how to present themselves. That's where we step in as well. So, mm -hmm. um, it all depends on, you know, who we're helping and what they need. So mm -hmm. that's what we do. Yeah. And then what led you to join Hawking Out Entertainment? Oh, what led me to call on Hawking Out Entertainment for their services was I'm a teacher, uh -huh. right? So I wrote a show about teaching, what it's like to be in the life of a teacher. Mm -hmm. And um, it started out as me just writing for a class because I was kind of frustrated with the job. But it ended up like selling out during workshops and then selling out in other theaters. And at that point, I'm like, okay, maybe I'm on to something mm -hmm. here. So let me get a little bit of help as far as like telling the story or, yeah. you know, at a bigger platform other than my colleagues, other than the education world. Mm -hmm. You know, because everyone has children. Yeah. Everyone has experienced a teacher. Mm -hmm. So it's we want to tell you our story because yeah. we have one, you know. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so I definitely, I needed assistance with that. And for me, I was just more in the education world and she's like, you know, let me take you out and let's see what we can do. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And how has it been mixing education and now, you know, trying to promote it and giving these classes, giving these workshops, giving these shows to people who, you know, would have not thought about something like education being combined with that? Right. Well, for me, as far as like what, how it's been for me. Um, it's been pretty much fun. Like mm -hmm. I don't see a separation in the world of service. Like yeah. as far as educators, we're service, we're servants mm -hmm. to the students, to that audience. And as far as how her service is helping me, as far as being an artist and putting me on, it's like learning, um, teaching, mm -hmm. and just kind of supporting each other. So how it's been in the education world? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> a little, you know, a little. You you hear the stories, mm -hmm. you know. So um, for me, it's been a blessing having these services because like I'm used to just telling the stories, colleagues understand them, parents understand them, but how to get people who are in their home mm -hmm. to maybe hear, okay, well, you know, we understand the children that you meet at home, but when they come to school, there are different people. Right. Right? So they're yeah. not the same. They are now playing the role mm -hmm. of the kid who's in front of me versus playing the role <laughs> of your child. Yes. And yes. the way I experience them, uh -huh. totally different. Yeah. Totally different. Yes. And what grades are you teaching? So right now, um, I run the theater program where I work in the Bronx. I work in the Bronx, New York. I don't want to say the school, but I love you. Yeah. <laughs> um, I work in the Bronx. I run a theater program from mm -hmm. grades pre-K through fifth grade. Nice. I think so, too. Yeah. I, it didn't start that way, though. I taught middle school. Uh -huh. I then went into teaching um, second grade, third grade, fifth grade. And then I ended up getting a Fulbright to go away and do research to try to figure out how can we take some of the ways that work in mm -hmm. other countries over here in the U.S. and make them work here. Mm -hmm. And while I was doing that, I was also taking acting classes okay. to like t come down mm -hmm. from what I was experiencing at work. Yeah. So once I um, saw how it benefited me, I started writing research um, papers to the superintendent, to my boss, like, this is how theater works. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, everyone needs a stage. We're literally all playing roles. We just need a little bit of time to be heard. Yeah. And she believed in that and believed in me. I love her. And then she pushed <laughs> for it. And I've been in that position doing that for the last four years, in addition oh. to performing my show on 
theater role at night mm-hmm. on 42nd Street. Which so, is yeah. amazing. It was a, it's an amazing show, by the way. Oh, wow. thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I feel like I'm, arts can be hard. Yes. A lot of schools don't have funding. A lot mm-hmm. of districts, a lot of different states, have, of course, it varies state to state. And a lot of these parents want to put their student into something that's art, artistic, not just, you know, go take your math class, go take your Spanish class, go take mm-hmm. your science class, stuff like that, that's going to get their brain stimulated. So I commend you on that because I, I know it's, it's not easy, no. especially sometimes if the district doesn't back you up or anything like that. So how, how has it been being able to have your stage play and have your coachings and have, you know, everything going on and the parents of your students now seeing that, are they seeing it in a different light? Absolutely. They love it. So it's funny, the district, the um, people who are in charge of education, Mm -hmm. they sometimes don't view the world of arts as benefiting like the whole person because it's like, oh, it's a waste of time. Drawing, making music, playing, what is that? Mm -hmm. But before we walk and talk as human beings, we play. We make noise. We kind of hear music. We dance. And that's really how we learn. Mm -hmm. So um, for me, excluding that just meant shutting off a part of a person. How do you get them to want to learn math if they can't express themselves creatively or any part of them? Mm -hmm. where now they're just expected to repeat the information I'm giving them. So the parents were always on board. Yeah. Parents are ready to see their children <laughs> dance and sing and have yes. these talents. In the neighborhood I worked in, unfortunately, the funding wasn't there. So they did push that a lot in their homes, but it didn't exist in school. Mm-hmm. And now that it exists, it's an outpour. The Any shows we have, they are fully packed. We sometimes have to do two shows. And these are in areas where you would assume like, oh, the parents don't care. No, they care, Mm -hmm. right? But they want it to know that you care too. Right. So um, it's it's been beneficial even for the staff, like the principals, the superintendent. They can see the difference in how the art motivates them and helps to suppress some of the things that now were happening in the classroom that didn't need to happen. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of done a whole 360. And a lot of them came to the show to see the show. Um, that I do to see how I like my views on what it needed to be like in a school to make it more comfortable for children. Yeah. And I, I swear it's been a 360. Now it's not a case of, oh, they're just playing in theater uh-huh. or they're just acting. They understand it's really work. Yeah. It's like you versus you, Very you know? Good. So I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and tell us a little bit about your show. Okay. So my show is called The Miseducation of Miss Freeman and Love Horn Lauren Hill, but in my writing it, it was literally like I felt tricked. Mm-hmm. I had gone to school for so many years, double master's degree, Fulbright scholarships. I've done everything they told me to do mm-hmm. to be the teacher that I wanted to be. And yet I walked into the classroom and needed none of the things that they gave me and everything else. Like I had to figure things out. It was yeah. like, am I am I in a twilight zone? Like, yeah. <laughs> did this kid just say that to me? Like, right. does he know I'm the teacher? Yeah. Like it was like a two a mix of worlds. So mm-hmm. I felt miseducated. I felt like I'm smart enough to know that you guys are lying to me. You mm-hmm. know the speeches, summers off. Um, you know make a difference in a child's life, which is still true. Mm-hmm. But you didn't tell me I'd go home at three o'clock and be tired. Mm-hmm. You didn't tell me that the stress I'm taking on are thirty lives, and then their parents. Right. And mm-hmm. now my colleagues will put me in a place to where sometimes I can't even navigate. Am I a leaner right now? Miss Freeman, when I get home, mm-hmm. they don't tell you the parts that'll kind of change your life. Yeah. So mm-hmm. for me, I feel miseducated. So it's called <laughs> the miseducation of Miss Freeman. You know, yeah. this teacher, she does all the right things. She takes all of the right amount of credits classes to be this teacher. She's excited about her first day. She walks in the room, mm-hmm. and that week of experience is like no other. It's mm-hmm. like wake me up from this. You yeah. know, I play all of the characters. There are about eight characters. So it's sort of like a Sarah Jones rendition who I love. Uh She has the ability to show us like the different times of women through different accents in one hour. And she just transforms in front of you. So I was addicted to it. And then um, (laughs) (laughs) I took the writing class writing for it. Um, The woman who I was writing with happened to be Ben Stiller's acting coach. So she's Mm. like, you know what? If you can meet me at my house, Mm -hmm. we can work on this and develop it into a show. Instead of it just being for class for 15 minutes, let's see what we can do. So I would leave the South Bronx, Freeman Street, I love you, and travel from there on the train an hour to Spring Street to meet her to write this show. Oh, it had to come out because I was like, this is, but because when I wrote it and I first did it for them as a class, I was, it was a serious, stressful day. She had given us a homework assignment, like Uh write about your life, write about your day. And for everyone else, they were artists. So they were writing like, and today I did an audition. Right. And this is what they said. And I'm like, no, today, Abdul. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In this class, in this this class I'm 
trying to do a read aloud. He passes gas and he right. cleared the whole carpet. That was my frustrating moment. Yeah. I had made this lesson plan, you know, and this guy, this six-year-old just disrupted my world. Right. So I wrote that. Mm. I was mad. And they were laughing. And I was like, uh-uh. <laughs> no. I used to, and then she was like, oh, it's funny. And right. I'm like, it's not. Uh -huh. I'm living this. But she was like, no, it is. For me as an audience to be able to peek into that world yeah. without having to go there, I want to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So we worked on it for a year and a couple of years. And then, yeah, it birthed its own little you know, following in a sense. Yes. Yeah. And now, how was Hawking Out Entertainment able to help to kind of get it you know, more momentum? I'm here. Yes. I am sitting here, we are in California, <laughs> and I'm here having this interview. Um, the entire, so when I did the show um, back in November, and it sold out the three times, I didn't have any press coverage. Mm -hmm. I didn't do any interviews. It mm -hmm. was literally me showing like little postings, um, little clips of what I was talking about, okay. other teachers talking about it. Like, it's mostly a story to justify the teacher's experience. So it was mm -hmm. mostly teachers saying, go look, look at the show, we're not crazy. Right. It's happening everywhere, you know? Mm -hmm. Go see the show. But then her attitude was, okay, I get that. So I get it amongst the education world that this is where it sits, but this is a story that many people might be able to relate to. So right. let's just figure out the different platforms and make sure we touch those bases. So. We are here. <laughs> yes. Yeah. For you, why was it important to to back up this project? It, for me, it was important because I saw the show three times. It was amazing. It was definitely relatable. Yeah. And I just felt like it shouldn't be so kept in. Like I feel that everybody needs to see it because mm -hmm. then parents will get a better understanding how it is being a teacher, mm -hmm. you know, and how their kids are. Because a lot of parents tend to say, oh, not my child. My child is not. But when they're in school, it's, it's a different personality. Mm -hmm. As Ms. Freeman would say, mm -hmm. it's like they wear a different mask, mm -hmm. you know. So um, I just feel like everyone needs to see the show. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm going to put it out. We want to get this on Netflix because nice. that's how amazing it is because the show is 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 phenomenal. So it's a true story, I but it's like it. unreal. Yeah. Yes. Like the yes. comments, it's like, did that really a lot of people come up and say, Did that really happen? I'm like, I didn't lie. I changed names. I <laughs> mm -hmm. added some things to embellish to make it flow. But these are experiences. Right. This is what's happening. Do not fall for what you're seeing. <laughs> on the nose. Now, teachers, you are the real MVP. Yes. Okay? yes. And Honestly. that is what we need to know. And you are enough. Everything you do is enough. And mm -hmm. it's a lot, you know? And yeah. I feel like it. even when I hear some of the people, like my friends, or when they talk, or they have, like, um, discrepancies with the teacher, and I'm like, I, I get touchy about it. Like, no. Because <laughs> right. this is the job that you walk into. Everything is empty. Uh -huh. If there is one decoration on the wall that's from her, mm -hmm. you know, that's her heart, so I get it that they're not perfect, but right. you got to know there's a lot of heart in there and trying, mm -hmm. you know? So that is so important for me, for teachers to know. Like, yeah. oh, no idea. <laughs> Have so, you yeah. found teachers coming to you saying, you know what, I can relate to that. I, I see it and I didn't know where to go and I was able to release that just by watching your play? Absolutely. Like, they can't believe it because yeah. it feels like a twilight zone. Like I said, you're the only adult in the room. So the things that are happening, you're kind of questioning yourself. Like, did, did he say? Because you can't ask them. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're yeah. doing it. So it's like, did this? But it did happen, yeah. you know? But then you go home and you try to say, no, no, no. Because these are kids and I'm a teacher and this is what I'm... But no, it's going on. Mm -hmm. um, not just with the kids, not just with the... Um, the parents, it's also like your colleagues. Right. Because now the colleagues are characters too. Mm -hmm. They are trying to play a position in there. The principal's yeah. playing a position. Some principals have been there for 20 years. Mm -hmm. The way they now think are like their children in a right. sense. Now everything that's small is big. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like, uh, what are we doing here? So the story kind of focuses on this is really what the reality of teaching is, guys. So before you do that, yeah, you need all the information. <laughs> Still sure. love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Still love it. Very rewarding. All those great things, but you have to have the mindset in that sense, you know? Yeah, I mean, honestly, even I don't have any kids myself. But I have a little sister, and looking at you know the time that we're in now with mm -hmm. COVID, and we can't you know send our kids physically to school, and especially with these programs like art programs where you know some kids want to 
grow up to be, you know, this artist, this actor, this singer, this writer, this dancer and stuff like that. So these programs are, are really helping, but teachers are necessary. If y'all didn't think teachers were necessary, <laughs> they're nah. necessary. Cause I know some of y'all are tidy kids right now when right. we send them to school, right. but teachers are absolutely necessary. Right. And it's not for some people, you know, of course, school's not a daycare. Right. But for some parents, it is. Oh, it is. Yes. And the, the luxury of their kids being able to enjoy something like a performing arts class is something that kids are missing now. Right. So how have you been able to transition, you know, your classes and what you're trying to teach into this new way of living? Oh, it gave me a, it, see, this is the thing about being creative. You can do anything creatively. You can sweep the floor creatively. You can mm -hmm. wash the windows creatively. So once they were like, okay, now you're going to be home. I said, okay. So I got into editing, um, like a lot of taking videos and putting together shows that they can virtually see. Yeah. Sometimes you would do it on Zoom or sometimes they would do it on Instagram Live. They mm -hmm. would submit their videos in and we would do live talent shows. Now here's the deal. It's COVID, right? Yeah. So you know the login for people were like maybe five kids a day. Uh -huh. There were like, um, I want to say 78 um, logins to watch the show at that one time, 78 wow. families, wow. not to mention whoever else got dropped because I had to show it on Zoom as well as Google. Yeah. So I was like, wow, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. They're home. Some of them have gained weight because I know they're just eating and sitting. Yeah. They're not even doing the same things, probably not even taking care of themselves at the way that they used to. But on right. this day, they had to get up out of bed, mm -hmm. kind of you know, use their mind to create. What is it I want to look like? What is it I want to present? They got dressed up. Yeah. They took their time, practice, and then they performed it and sent it in. I think that that is amazing. Yeah. Like that in itself is like a form of therapy. Let me take you out of your reality real quick, and we're going to do this. Mm -hmm. So what I did now was is that I'm going to do that virtually as well. So even if they make the decision that we don't go back into the room, mm -hmm. me and my students, and not only my students, I decided to um, create an entire page dedicated. Mm -hmm. It's called Drama Works, D R. Uh -huh. A-M-A-W-O-R-X, uh -huh. where any kid can submit all over yeah. the world. And this way they can connect if they are in um, Atlanta or New York, they can kind of connect and maybe work together on something mm -hmm. because I had it to where you can submit with your families or your friends wow. because these kids are really good at editing. So we just took it online mm -hmm. and they loved it. It's, you wow. should see it. They got their little their makeup on, like their little <laughs> glasses. Oh, my yeah. God. I wish I could show you these little. And they're this big. Oh, yeah. And some of them even had turbans on because maybe their hair wasn't done. But they are doing their leg kicks. And yes. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Magic. You know, it was it was really, really, wow. really, really nice. So, yeah. We're just going to take it online. I mean, that's that's all we can really do yeah. at this point. But honestly, looking at some of the things that are going online, mm -hmm. it's better. Right. Like you said, you want to, you know, your people are able to go from different states and still be, you know, a part of something that some kids in, let's say, in Atlanta, if they don't have it, now have that opportunity yep. to do something yep. like this, or if they couldn't reach it, do something like this. Now, what has been the most rewarding part of working with these kids? Oh, my God. Everything. Um it's, uh, I would say their energy. Mm -hmm. I think that kids give off like this pure, positive, potential type of energy where everything is possible. Yeah. Um, everything is new. Everything is grand. And I love it because they force it on me. Mm -hmm. So even if I'm like, oh, no, 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 we can't do that. Like, we can't put this here. They're like, we can. And then they have <laughs> these reasons. And I find myself like, you know what? We can. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. It, it's a for, it forces me to have that childlike behavior mm -hmm. versus where if, I think if I was around adults all day, I kind of would take on the habits of that they take on when just speaking about life. Right. But because I'm with kids, everything, you see the blue clay? What? Oh, it's mm -hmm. like everything is like for the first time that pure positive like yeah. potential where I can discover new things. I mm -hmm. think that is my biggest, biggest reward from working with them. Yeah. And what made you want to become a teacher? Because I know, like I said, like we've been talking about, it's not for everybody. Right. It's, it's, to be a teacher, <laughs> it's not, I couldn't do it. Right. Right. So it's not for everybody. But what was that thing that made you say, you know what? I, I want to be a teacher. Hmm. Um. I've always, there were three things I always wanted to say, <laughs> I always wanted to do. And I remember my mother saying at that time, you got to pick one. Now, look, you don't, right? right? <laughs> but I wanted to be a teacher, a beautician, and an actress. And I was like, I'm going to do those things mm -hmm. at different times in my life. Right. For me, it was important to be a teacher because I feel like I've had great teachers in my life that came at times right when I needed them. Yeah. I, distinct, I distinctly remember teachers at certain points in my time where I was like, there, were, there was a way that she could have behaved or handled me, and they kind of took me on and yeah. helped me. I kind of want to be the adult that I know I needed mm -hmm. for any kid that's around. Yeah. 
So, you know, it, it, I always wanted to, I've never, even from the second grade, I had an awesome second grade teacher named Miss Nicolois. Mm -hmm. And I remember always saying, I'm going to be a second grade teacher from that point on. And my, you know, my father would try to change that. Like, are you sure, girl, you can do it? Like, are you sure you want to do that? And I'd be like, nope. That or this or that, you right. know, the irony is of the acting and then the teaching that yeah. that's stu that stuck any way you put it. Mm -hmm. You know, even though I did the fields of education, it yeah. still came back somehow. But I always wanted to be that adult. Like, like I remember Miss Nicolosis name. Mm -hmm. I remember Miss Wilson, you know, so it's like you have these key people. I know all of you remember a favorite teacher. Oh, yes. See? Yes. yes. You yes. will never forget, right? <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. So they get to live on and on in your heads. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's what <laughs> yes. I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> now tell me about one of your standout students and why are they one of your standout students? Oh my gosh. <laughs> one of them. One of the many of them. Um, okay, so one of them changed the way I approached teaching because mm -hmm. like I started teaching it was a great time out of college, but now my friends are young and they have, we had, you know, they have jobs where they're staying out late. At mm -hmm. the time, I think I was still working at the supper club. Bar, see, that's the thing, bartending to make money even mm -hmm. as a teacher. Yeah. So for me, I was kind of torn between the entertainment life and going to work. Mm -hmm. And I remember getting the job um, in the Bronx, where I am now, and there was a kid that they had who was, I guess, responsible for retiring the teacher that I was replacing mm. based on his behavior. Probably now I know he wasn't responsible. She was tired. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But <laughs> <laughs> at that time, the, the list that they gave me of the things he did, I could see yeah. you being tired. Mm -hmm. So I'm expecting this six-year-old who's going to be a terror in my world to show up to class. And yeah. he shows up and he has these baggy pants on, this big book bag. And he's like, he can't really write yet. He's in the first grade. And I remember thinking, oh, my goodness, I'm going to have a tough time with him. But mm -hmm. he didn't. You know, he he liked me for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. I was honest with him about everything. Yeah. And then a woman pulled me aside and she was like, um, I'm just going to say his name is Elijah. Mm -hmm. or she's like, uh, can I talk to you for a second? I'm like, yeah. She said, you know, Elijah. I was like, yeah. She said, you know, every day he's here at six. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, six in the morning? Like, for me, I'm still trying to hit the alarm and right, snooze. Right, yeah. I might not even be there. I might even want to call out. I don't yeah. know yet. And I'm like, he's what? She's like, yeah, every morning he's there at 6 with his book bag. He told me that his mom hasn't been home, and he doesn't really know when he should come to school. So when he starts to see it get light, mm -hmm. he gets dressed, and he comes. And then it made sense to me. He always had, like, this gel stuck in his hair, big baggy clothes, yeah. big book bag, um, car freshener, in his desk and in his book bag to smell good. See, he still knew what to do, uh, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Still with the gel, right? Good. He's got to look good. Look good, smell good. Right. Yeah. And he's on the stairs at 6 in the morning. I said, why? Wow. Because in my mind, I'm like, uh, what? Yeah. She's like, oh, he said he had to do your homework. And he had to be here because you were going to check. And I'm like, is he going to make me be here every day? Wow. On time? <laughs> right. I was so done with him. Like, the whole way I treated the job it's totally different now because yeah. now this while I'm thinking it's just a job I'm getting tired a little bit it's not necessarily making a lot of money so I'm still bartending and I'm just tempted mm -hmm. to just be like you know what guys let me go in this world right. it's a little bit better and this kid is going is waking up at six in the morning when I, I'm still home mm -hmm. probably just gonna grab something to throw on really quick because I'm tired from grading papers the night before or whatever I was doing yeah and he's like, no, I'm here, 6 in the morning. A kid that they claimed was such a terror mm -hmm. that doesn't have guidance, he's saying that. Yeah. You know, he's like, no. They, and we had to then find out the mom hadn't been home for two weeks, all these other things. Yeah. But I would never have known because he was in my class every day with his homework, right or wrong. Mm -hmm. That changed my whole, I was like, oh, God. Yeah. Now I actually have to. So he watched everything I did. I used to. I remember eating and having to eat a certain way because he was the kid like this. <laughs> and I like. You just gonna put that in your mouth like right. that? Right. <laughs> you just. That's how you eat it with the side. Right. I'm like, I don't know. Like I'm just want to eat. Yeah. Like, but that kid changed that whole. Wow. Because after that, he was like this nice, well-mannered kid. He still had a little hostility. I mean, that's his world. Mm -hmm. But he was. He could write. He could read. He was just like this. Ah. Oh. Yeah. So for me, I was like, okay. Elena, yeah, you gotta go to you gotta go to bed. You gotta get up on time <laughs> because this kid is he's looking at you mm -hmm. like no one's home, and right. you act you act like you care. You seem like you care. Okay, I'm gonna be here mm -hmm. every day with my homework. That wow. one right there. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. still to this day. Wow. Yes. So what is what does it feel like knowing that you know these kids who may have come from troubled backgrounds find a safe space in coming to class? 
it was two things. It was like, first, am I crazy? <laughs> <laughs> what do they think? They're just going to come here and like right. let off in here? Um, I, I actually um, love it. It took a long time for me to get it like that mm-hmm. because I'm a human too. Yeah. It wasn't, I wasn't always in a space where I was patient, understanding, mm-hmm. and looking at how I could change me to make their experience better in my room. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I was the teacher yelling, screaming, getting frustrated, and probably saying things that I didn't need to say. Yeah. Not knowing that I can provide that safe haven, it changed my world. I no longer think of it as a teacher. Like now I'm managing souls. Now yeah. we're all in here. And in order for us to feel a way, I have to create that particular vibe. Right. So in knowing that that's my job, I love that they are able to see what I'm trying to do. Mm-hmm. Because it's one thing to be like, I'm this. Yeah. You know, I'm this type of person. I'm this type of teacher. And that's it. I don't even say it. They come into my room and they tell me. And that's the only way I know. Yeah. I get write-ups. They're not good all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Because they're opinionated on based on how I do my work Mm -hmm. but I'm okay with that yeah now if the kids then say that then I would want to change it up right but when they are in my room like one time I was absent and my co-worker took a video of outside of my room there were like 12 kids with their lunch outside and he's on the tape and he's saying you know she's absent right and they're like we don't care we want to be here like just in the area Wow. Like, and for me, he knew, I was like, you know, I wrote tears to my eyes. He was yeah. like, you needed that because I was sick, you know, yeah. at home. He was like, I needed that because it's like, I know that it's it's like an energy. They are, they're like, we don't care if she's not here. Mm-hmm. We're not going outside. Like, you don't want to go outside with your friends? Right. I used to be like, go outside, guys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah <just> right. <laughs> but it feels really good. It teaches me about me. Yeah. You know, what works, you know, what, what sets me off that mm-hmm. lets me kind of work on myself as well. Because the truth is adults are nothing but taller children. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. I'm like, it's a wonderful thing to know (laughs) that they could see me how I want them to, not not me telling them how to. They they are telling me, Mm -hmm. you know. Love that. Nice. Yeah, right? It's <laughs> no, a good time. No, yeah. <laughs> you talked a little bit about having, you know, to work another job while you were teaching, mm-hmm. but still a job that's someone, you know, in the entertainment industry. How have you been able to parallel, you know, your teaching plus entertainment? Oh, it's been wonderful. Okay, so when I started teaching, I was um, bartending at the Supper Club, one of the like biggest clubs in New York, mm-hmm. bartending and waitressing. Um, and I would do it at night. I loved it. I loved the people. Like, I love the arts. I love their thinking. I love the creativeness of it all. Mm-hmm. So balancing it, I don't really, honestly, I don't know what I was doing to make up for the time as far as being a part of both worlds, but a lot of my friends are in the industry, my brother, my sister, my sister-in-law, like there are a lot of people who are already involved. Like I grew up in Teaneck mm-hmm. and in Teaneck High School, there were a lot of people like Lady Luck and, you know, um, the Sugar Hill Gang, their, their um, grandkids are in that area. Like mm-hmm. it was a lot of people in the area that are involved into the entertainment world. Right. So it was just easy to maintain because now these friendships exist, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so it's it's been easy, and I I love it because even at times, like I had a friend who was on a television show. She was on Harlem Heights, and I remember at the time I was teaching fifth grade, and for me it was so important for them to see her, yeah, you know, and to know her, you know. They know I go to school and write. They know I do my show. Mm-hmm. I have I have it hanging up. You you need to see these people that look like you in positions of power, and yeah. she would then come. And I just thought that was so amazing for them to be able to see that. And they would go home bragging like, oh, I get to, you know, they just felt so good about it. They're not far removed from it. I need mm-hmm. them to see that. You're not far, you're not far from this. Right. Don't, you know, the people that you work with, we're right here. We're all together. Mm-hmm. And yeah, this could be you. And she would come in and they would love talking about her, imitating her because, you know, she talks different than them. Mm-hmm. It was, it's beautiful. So I love combining both, you yeah. know? So, yeah. And in, in entertainment, that's, you know, who you know is is what makes it. So to right. have, you know, eyes on your play from people who are in the industry, that's that's amazing. It was very amazing. <laughs> Irene Gandhi came to my play. Irene mm-hmm. Gandhi, um, she is like the guru of um, publicists as far as New York is concerned. Wow. She brought Michael Jackson to Columbia Records. That's how far back she yeah. goes. And so when she's sitting front row and she's laughing and she's there with Lola Brown and they're mm-hmm. laughing and then they're waiting after and then she brings her daughter and she wants to talk. Oh, I'm like, yeah. yeah. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm doing something yeah, right. <laughs> right. I'm a teacher, but I can get into this. Yes, you know what I mean? Absolutely. So that part was rewarding. And then the cool part is one of my students were there. So they got to meet her. They got yeah. to see me on the stage. So for them, it was like, it's surreal. Mm-hmm. It's like, 
I'm teaching you. I'm not telling you to do something I'm not doing. Mm -hmm. You know, most most of the stories are, oh, teachers, they're telling them, but they're not living that life. They're trying to teach you how to do it. No, no, no. The streaming has to go. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) We are. We will be in Cali. And we will be going to do these shows. Mm -hmm. And we will be coming back to learn. Like, it's all fun. It's all a process. And it doesn't have to be excluded from one or the other. So, yeah, it's a trip watching that world collide and it work. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good time. Uh, now that you have this partnership with Hawking Out Entertainment, mm-hmm. what's next? What's next for you and what's next for Hawking Out Entertainment as well? Okay, okay. so what's next? Um, to keep going, definitely more interviews like this. Mm-hmm. Like when the show was in its baby stages, I had a, a lot, a lot of help. Yeah. Like um, it was me and another woman, um, Jacine, mm-hmm. who was like in the car, setting up the show, setting up the lights, doing everything. Now I want it to be developed where I have more of a team, Mm -hmm. where that adds in Hawking Out Entertainment, Um, and kind of just to keep going with getting my message out. I definitely want to write a book for Mm -hmm. first-time teachers, Mm -hmm. Um, kind of a guide to kind of help them in the classroom, letting them know that their experience is justified. Um, Hawking Out Entertainment, of course, is recommending I write a book as far as the process of the show and how to write a one-woman show or one-person show, mm-hmm. even if it's just to get your story out there creatively, yeah. as well as helping the children do that as well. So with the drama works, mm-hmm. I'm also going to have kids, if they are interested, like with my theater program, the children were doing the same thing I was doing. Yeah. They were learning how to write about how they feel, write about how they life, and then be able to go on the stage and perform it. Mm-hmm. So that's something that I also want to share with a broader audience yeah. and keep going with this show. So the show sold out four times in Theater Row on 42nd Street. Yeah. And now we're going to London. Wow. So when we leave here, August 31st, we go to London, and uh-huh. then we do a show in London in September and then November, and it's a good time. Nice. <laughs> so that's what's coming along, just more yeah. of this, yeah. you know what I mean? And more connections and, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Just want to build relationships, mm-hmm. um, expand my company, and just give people the opportunity and just show them that you know anything is possible. Yeah. They can do it. And Miss Freeman is a perfect example of, you know, how how to get things going because now she's in the midst of working with these kids and like she said, they see it. Mm-hmm. She's not only talking about it, she's actually doing it. Yeah. And so by them witnessing that is just something that's for me, I feel happy about it you know it's, it's just a great feeling so it's just that's, that's what it's all about it's about giving back yeah. and so that's what we're here for so Love just going to keep it like that and giving back is the best way yes to do anything. Mm-hmm. yes you get something you give back yes mm-hmm. always i think that's so awesome thank you I, i'm thank all you. for arts i'm all <laughs> for you know young people getting into these arts and seeing these role models that mm-hmm. they can then you know, say oh, somebody who looks like them yes. in these positions where they may have never thought, Ever. especially in this day and time where there's a lot of racial injustice going on. Right, right, it's, right. it's more important now more than ever right. for these I kids agree. to see representation and in, in different aspects of life, right. whether right. it's in the arts, in politics, anything. Right. So yep. I, I commend you both. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so is, much. This is absolutely Thank you. Amazing. If you have not already, check out the miseducation of Miss Freeman and Hawking Out Entertainment. You will not regret it. So thank you thank both you. Thank for you sitting so down with me. Thank you I for really us. appreciate thank it. You. And I wish you both nothing but more and more success. Thank you. Thank you, thank we you so much. Your time. We appreciate yes, you. you.